Hi, welcome to this series on taking your art from 3D applications and throwing it into a game engine so you get real-time interaction with simulations like physics and particle systems. Also, most importantly, good to very good quality renderings in real-time or near real-time within a game engine. I'm showing you Unity. You can follow a similar workflow for Unreal. This is the Unity Hub, the first thing that comes up when you launch Unity. From the main screen, you could click on Previous Projects. You can also learn more about Unity, whether it's downloading projects or going to tutorials and experience more and understand how to build things, access to the community, as well as installs. This is a very important one. Currently, I'm downloading the latest one as of this video, 2020.3. It's LTS, a long-term release, which means it's not going to update every month or two. If you need a newer version or you want to experience the cutting edge, you can click on add and pick from the pre-releases, alphas and betas. These might be a little more unstable than the long-term release version. You also have access to the previous installs and you can add modules and a module could be, you want to export for Windows, the Microsoft Store, Android, iOS phones, you can WebGL, you can add these modules here. You could also install a version of Unity that you're no longer using because it's older. Unity does take up space. Game engines do take up hard disk space. So you want to manage that space. Uninstall the ones you're not using. Once this install is done, go to the account setting and sign in. I'm going to click here to sign in. Scoot on down to here and click on the sign in option. Enter your username and password and you're ready to go. Of course, if you forgot your password, click this link. Once you signed in, you'll see your initials in the you use settings to redirect paths for where your Unity installs live on your computer. And you can manage your license, such as checking for updates, activate a new license. If you're logging in through a remote computer, you might have to activate the license on that remote computer. So go to license management and activate a new license. I'm clicking here to go back to the home screen to start a new project. Start a new project, just click on this new button or you can click here and pick which version of Unity to use. These are the, all the ones that are installed. Give your project a name and I'm calling it basic. Pick where to store your project locally. A lot of folders will be created, so pick a good location. And this is just picking the location of the folder. Click on select folder. This is next big decision. Will this be a two-dimensional project? And two-dimensional projects are 3D projects just with a locked 2D camera, and you'll get certain different functionalities. Since we're doing this workflow about taking stuff from 3D applications like Blender and Maya, 3D Studio Max, and bringing it into Unity in order to do simulations, have some cool effects, and render out in close to real time as possible, then your options would be Either the High Definition Render Pipeline, RP, which gives awesome results, but your computer has to be up for the challenge. Make sure you have a good graphics card in there and you're ready to go. Before you get there though, if you want to take an intermediate step, somewhere between just regular 3D look and high definition look, then Universal Render Pipeline is a good choice. The Universal Render Pipeline is designed to work on lower spec hardware, such as phones, tablets, little slower computers, However, it still looks pretty awesome. There are some special looks and effects that can only happen in high definition render pipeline. If you're starting out, this is a great choice. Starting out, start out small, experiment, and see if that's look you need. And if it isn't, then start a new project and go for the high definition and, and vice versa. If you're feeling a drag on your system and you're not getting the real time input you're looking for when experimenting and rendering, then use the universal render pipeline. I'm going to start out with the Universal Render Pipeline. I'm also going to, just as a file convention, just put U, URP so I know when looking through my project list, this is a basic Universal Render Pipeline project. Click on Create and wait a moment. If a dialog comes up to allow access to this new game engine, I'm going to allow it because I need to work with it. Now Unity is loading up all the templates to build out your project. This may take a minute or two. Once it's loaded, you're ready to get started. When you start up Unity, this is the basic layout of your project. We're currently looking at the scene tab, which is a 3D space to revolve around. This is the game. This is the view of what your camera sees. And you see how rich this rendering looks. This would be the in-game camera 
that you're using to tell your story. We'll be rendering this in real time to capture the scene as it gets animated. Right now, no animation, but you already can see how light is glowing over here. The shadows have a nice soft touch to them and the scene looks pretty rich texture map wise. So this is our goal to capture this in real time to cut down on rendering time in our 3D applications. Here we're gonna capture things in real time or close to real time. You click on these tabs to toggle the views. Off to the left side is your hierarchy. You can think of this as the collections within Blender or as the outliner in Maya. Here's a list of your sample folders in your scene. I'm gonna click on all assets. This is your asset area. We could drag and drop new assets into this project, or you could right click, import new assets to get new assets in here as well. This is your inspector. When you click on something, you'll see the properties over here. To navigate the viewport, hold down the option or alt key and left mouse button to orbit, option or alt key, right mouse button, and you can drag in and out. Option or Alt middle mouse button to pan around your scene. And if you have a wheelie mouse, that's the scroll wheel. You could also use a scroll wheel to navigate, zoom in and zoom out. Let's take a moment to see how you position the camera. You have a camera object in the scene. If I click on it in the hierarchy and then press the F key, you'll focus in on that object. So this way you can move it around using a manipulator, but that's not very convenient. You want to be able to look through the camera. If I want my game view to be more like my viewport, let's say my viewport's like this, and my camera still hasn't moved, here's my preview of my camera. All you have to do, because if I go to game view, it's like this still, all you have to do to align your camera with this view is to select the camera, go to game object, align with view. Sometimes you might be manipulating the viewport, and you'll come up across a situation where, let me align my camera to the view, game object, align with view, where you're seeing through to the other side. This is due to the clipping of the camera. And clipping is used to exclude objects that are very close or very far away. Sometimes you don't want your camera to be blocked by an object that shouldn't be in the shot. Other times it's just about rendering things that are needed because your camera shouldn't be this close. But if you're making an animation, it's a good idea to set this number down to the lowest possible, which is 0 0.01, and now our wall returns. To make it quicker to work in the viewport, let's turn off Recalculate Global Illumination. If I go to Window, Rendering Editor, Lighting, this pop-up menu appears, and you usually want to dock that. Just click and drag that tab to dock it right here next to the inspector. Uncheck auto-generate. This way, the scene isn't going to auto-generate the light maps. And when you're ready for your final render, you either click on auto-generate and wait for the auto-generation to happen. And there's our light map back. Or go under generate lighting and click bake reflection probes. The quick goal is to create a small animation and render it out. This way you can think about how will you integrate this into your pipeline of creating 3D applications. I'm gonna create a new game object, game object, 3D object, and I'll start out with a sphere. There's a sphere. There's not gonna be any texture maps on it. It's just gonna be the default materials. If I play this scene, clicking here, clicking, we have our scene, but nothing's happening yet. I'm gonna stop playing. I want some physics to happen. I'm gonna select this object. I'm gonna reposition my sphere, just so it has a little more height to it when it falls. With this object selected, going to the inspector and adding a component. And that component will be rigid body. And start to type in rigid and the type of rigid body. If I want a three-dimensional rigid body, not the 2D version, and I'll click on that. If I play this simulation, there's our ball falling. So we'd create an animation, but it's not much of an animation. Let's add a little more to this. So, so far there's a spherical collider on this. A collider detects the collision with other surfaces, the touching of other surfaces. A rigid body determines that this object will be added to a physical base system. 
And under the rigid body, we can change the mass, drag of the object, and other properties. If we don't want gravity to affect it, we can uncheck this, but we do. Well, there's no bounce on my object. Why? Properties such as bounce is added through materials. This is an interesting concept because usually materials describe how things look. Here, a material would describe how this object interacts with other objects in the scene. To create a new physics-based material to apply to our object, right-click in this area, create physics material. You also could go under assets, create, and select physics-based material from here as well. To assign this material to this object, your choices would be to click and drag and drop on this material slot, or click this target, which will bring up a browser, and then you could click on this material right there. To change the properties of this material, click on it and look under the inspector. Bounciness. Oh, I like lots of bounciness to my material. Go to the game tab and, and press play. We created an animation, hooray. Let's render this out. To add the scene reporter or other packages, we have to go to the package manager. Go to window, package manager. This is the list of packages already within your project. If we need to install a preview package that's not already installed, click the setting icon, go to advanced project settings, make sure when package manager is selected under advanced settings to enable this, have this checked. Otherwise you won't see preview packages like the recorder. Back in Package Manager, from the drop-down menu, select Unity Registry. And here you'll see a list of all the packages you can download. And the ones marked with Preview next to it are Preview Packages. That's why we had to check that Enable button a moment ago. Do search for Record and you'll find the Unity Recorder right here. Click on Install and then we'll have the ability to record our animation. And once it's done installing, you can close this project manager window. Go to Window, General, Reporter, and open up the Reporter window. This is where you set up the parameters for recording. Click on Add Recorder. You can make an animation clip, movie, image sequence, GIF, or just record the audio. I'm looking to create an image sequence. If you need another option, like going straight out to a movie, you can select that one. What will be the source for this animation? I'm gonna use the game view. What file format, PNGs, if you wanna include the alpha to knock out the background, you could check this one. I'm just gonna do a straight recording of the image. This will be the image file format, where it's gonna be saved. I create a new folder to save this animation in. Select folder. This is a variable number for takes, which is right here if you want to change this. And this is used to help with the naming of the files. And when you're ready to get started recording, make sure you're out of play mode at first. This way your animation will start all over again. I have the preview window open here, have the game view open here, and click on and click on this red button to start recording. When you're all done, click the red button to stop. Let's see what we captured. And here's our animation as PNGs. And this was done in real time, no waiting for a long render. The viewport played back a little slower because, because we're trying to capture every frame. We don't want any frame to be skipped. And we accepted the default frames per second. Let's see how this looks as a movie clip. Click the add recorder. I'll select movie. MP4, high quality, this will be the name of it. Before I start recording this animation, I'm gonna make sure this isn't playing and it's not gonna play because exit play mode once we're done recording. If you wanna skip the step of post-production because you just want a quick way to iterate and see what's going on before you hit post. Stop recording. MP4 file could be seen here. And here's the MP4 file. This is the MP4, skipping out of post-production, no image sequences needed. You can just take this clip and upload it to YouTube or just use this as a placeholder while you do more special effects and then go for the final rendering as a PNG sequence. 
and then use for the final rendering a sequence of images. Then you have a pure image to affect in post-production. So the next step is to take control of the camera, make the scene more of your own, and starting to add special effects to your scene. This shows you a quick workflow after you set up Unity or Unreal, how to make it an almost real-time renderer of high quality scenes. And the more we'll work with it, the better quality scene will be the output. You're not gonna take big hits on render times. Launch whatever applications you use to composite your video clips in post-production. That could range from QuickTime Player, if you still use that, to After Effects, Premiere, DaVinci, whatever else you might wanna use. I'm gonna import those files. Right click, import file. And I selected a single file for import. All you have to do is select the first file of all the images, click on PNG sequence and click import. Drag the sequence to this new composition icon right here. And here's our animation. All done in real time. To render this out from here, go under File, Export, add to Media Encoder. And after your file is listed in Media Encoder, just pick a place to save it and click the green Render button. And here's your MP4.